Hey guys, I'm back. It's Battle Box Day. I'm pretty happy. Look, what happened to the to the dirty off-white box that we know and love? Um, trying new things. Cool. So, uh, I don't have my computer with me right now, so we can't do any shout-outs or anything today. Got a little bit of a spoiler as to what the theme is, but I'm not even going to talk about that right now. We're just going to unbox this box because I'm excited. Yes. Active Shooter Mass Casualty Response Kit. So, reaching back to my former life as a, uh, a medic, a combat medic in the military, a, uh, you know, firefighter medic in the volunteer fire service, um, working on the ambulance up in New York, this, this speaks to me. So, Mission 36, uh, I have high, high hopes. So... Here's your sit rep, Takavec. So I, I still don't read this whole thing. I don't know who does. So as a review, again, for people new to BattleBox, so we are unboxing the Pro Plus. So the Pro Plus involves everything from the basic, the advanced, and the Pro box. So what we pay for this box is $149.99 for everything. The big difference between the Pro Plus and everything else is that we get everything, but the Pro Plus involves, comes with, the knife of the month, which is why it's special. And the Pro Plus box, they say it has a retail value, manufacturer's suggested retail price, of $298.75. So we'll take a look and see how we feel about that. It already looks kind of interesting. I'm pretty excited. So let's dig right into this. Let's start with the basic box and let's see what we've got. So a lot of this looks like it might be medical equipment, which probably is not going to be very exciting to a lot of people. The first item on the basic list here, the basic box costing $24.99 with an MSRP of $44.56, the North American Rescue 6-inch trauma dressing. So they give this a value of $4.60. Look, medical equipment is expensive uh, all the time, no matter where you get it from. We talked a little bit about this last time I looked at, you know, an individual first aid kit. Uh, the difference between a dressing and a bandage. A dressing is a sterile item that goes directly on a wound, okay? That's important. A bandage is something that you use to secure a dressing or you use to overall wrap on top of. Um, you could use a bandage also to secure a splint or a, make a sling or something, but there's a big difference when you talk about dressings and bandages. Sterile stuff is always gonna be more expensive. So they say this is 460, that's a fair price for a, a big bulky trauma dress. I don't want to open this right now because this to me, I'm going to throw this in my medical pack and, and it's going to be actual of use to me to have in there. So I'm not going to mess with it. This is going in the like it pile. So next we're looking for the Battletac Tactical Molly Glove Dispenser with Nitrile Gloves. Let's take a look for that. I'm going to assume that this is what we're talking about here. Um, now, okay, gloves. Why gloves? Let me tell you, back in medic school, when you had any practical exercise, if you did not start by putting on your gloves and walking up to the instructor, and I remember this so specifically, this is like a traumatic event, you had to put on your gloves and you had to yell, infection control for me and my partner, before you even, if you did not take that step, you could have done the very best medical anything, you automatically failed for the day. This is one of the most important parts in any time you're treating any kind of like in a professional medical environment because if you fail to protect yourself from any kind of gross nasty whatever is out there you know that's literally you can catch whatever disease and die so first of all i have never had orange gloves i used to carry purple and black gloves because i thought that was cool night trial by the way is kind of the hot glove these days um people are allergic to latex latex is a natural rubber product. Nitrile is synthetic. There are vinyl gloves, which don't really have the same tight fit as, as latex gloves. Nitrile is a lot better than that. And you cannot be allergic to a synthetic thing. You don't, the body doesn't make enzymes against synthetic compounds, only naturally occurring ones. So let's take a look at the pouch. It looks like a pretty rugged pouch. Everything, by the way, is in coyote colors so everything in this box matches i can see a lot of use for this pouch besides the gloves if it didn't have this little elastic area to grab the gloves from so this is obviously specifically made for 
your gloves, but you know what? This still has some, God, this makes me wish that I was still a medic. Back when I was in the army, it was a uh, 91 Bravo. Now I think it's a 68 whiskey, maybe. Um, it changed a couple times, the MOS, while I was in. Um, so, good, solid molly straps. I mean, everything on here looks pretty well made. Stitching on this all looks really tough. Very thick, very high quality nylon. I think this, um, this pouch is really well made. And look, it's made so that it, you know, it, it doesn't just collapse. It's, it's like really good stuff. It holds its shape. I wonder what size these gloves are. They're about large. Looks like medium to large. So. Yeah. Hi, Ethan. Hi. I'm moving. You want to wear a glove? Yeah. Okay, just one though. I, I want to save these. So when these are in the pouch, you can just grab a glove through this little slot right there. Um, so it'll hold the gloves pretty securely. I can't guarantee it'll hold anything else pretty securely, but you know, if this is what you're using it for, PETA, do you mind? PETA wants to see your glove too. Something that I probably would have carried back when I was still professionally, you know, wearing camouflage to do my medic stuff. Um, this would have been interesting rather than, I used to keep my gloves in, um, one of the old uh, compass slash first aid pouches, um, which was not Molly at all. It was the old Alice clip stuff. So guess where this is going? Like it, pile. Oh, thanks. You're all done with it. Yeah. Okay. So at a price of nine ninety nine for the quality of the pouch, and it comes full of I don't know how many pairs of gloves, but you know, plus they're orange. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's a fair price for this. I think that's what you're going to find that for, so um, I'm okay with that. Next, there's a tourniquet and shears pouch, um, which I think I already found, which is over here. And I think this is also by Battletech. I don't think this is by Battletech. Uh, this just feels a lot more flimsy. So it's marked TQ for tourniquet in bright orange, but it also gives you the option to put a patch over it. So you could put like a rat's tourniquet in there or something. Um, hmm. I'm not sure I like this. It's, it's automatically made pretty loose. I would like a much tighter, I just dug myself a naughty wording hole, didn't I? Um, yes, I like, I like tighter things, let's see. So it gives you the option for molly carry, it looks like, or a horizontal carry on a belt. Um, so I like that it gives you options. It just, the nylon on this is so much flimsier than the nylon on this. If you're gonna carry, I, I so it's, oh, this is, or this one's giving me some issues deciding concept, but just this, this is, you can kind of tell this elastic is not made well. This is gonna wear, like, look at the the way it's, I don't know if you guys know what I'm saying, but you can tell this elastic is gonna wear out. And it's already so loose. There's no guarantee that what you put in here, like you gotta be very selective of what you put in here. I, I would just be afraid of losing stuff in here. And plus shears, now I know that there are some shears already in this and they're the next item so I'm going to take them out now. I love trauma shears. They are awesome. Like so this is for your shears and your tourniquet. Well number one, how do these neatly fit in? Like I don't, I don't get it because they're just going to come out the bottom. I mean this is, and, and this does not hold them securely. This is just, I think, a flawed kind of design. Unless you put your shears like this and then put it down really tight, but then it'll still, I mean, then you got this all sticking out. I don't know, I, I kind of, in terms of looks, I, I like it. It just, it's not very functional. It's not, I don't know. This is gotta, I mean, I think this is kind of a waste. Like this is, I think they wanted to find a product that matched the color scheme of everything else. 
and so they did. But you know what? There are actual, like, EMS items that are designed to carry this stuff. Like, they are designed specifically to put this in that do it properly for a little bit more dollar amount, sure. But I think they were looking for the tactical cool coyote solution and they grabbed one and it, it just doesn't it just doesn't work. So I mean honestly if you're gonna give me a product based on the fact that it looks like everything else but it doesn't perform as well as maybe just like a black EMS designed one, I'd rather have the one that doesn't match and holds things properly and has all the right stuff. So this This is going in the don't like it pile. Our trauma shears, I always like these things. These things are, are awesome and I love talking about them. These things will cut straight through a penny or a human pinky if you're not careful, but they shred through things like clothes and nylon and um, stuff like that. Uh, essential, you know, to do good patient treatment to expose the wounds and see what you're dealing with. Um, and sometimes for extrication, they help with, with minor stuff too. Um, so these are great to have. Now, $9.99. Hmm. Because they're orange and black, awesome for Halloween. I don't think we need to pay $9.99 for a good pair of these. I think we can find them for a bit cheaper if we look around. I know we can. Then again, you know, you also don't want to get a cheap pair of these. So I, I like them, but I know you can find a quality pair for a little bit cheaper than that. I know for a fact you can. Um, but this is still going in the like it pile last item in the basic box the glow led disposable triage tree ugh, glow led disposable triage light three pack for 12.99 triage again for those not familiar that's the process of identifying the uh the major injury or um, problem with your patient and deciding uh, what order everybody gets treated in what priority they are sometimes as a medic You've got to make the decision that somebody is probably going to die on the battlefield. Sergeant First Class Norwood, our chief instructor on our medic class way back when in Charlie 232, Charlie Company, 232nd Medical Battalion. I remember on the first day of school, he stood in front of the class real quiet, and one of the first things he said to us was that a medic is the closest thing to God on the battlefield because the medic will personally decide who lives and who dies. I was like, whoa, that's pretty heavy, dude. In triage, you've got different levels. The priority of getting them evacuated and treated. Okay, so in any mass casualty situation, you know, there's gonna be something called a mass casualty bag and they're gonna have triage tags anyway. And actually, I've never seen all these colors. I'm, I'm used to like a green, yellow, red, and black. Black for expected. Um, and then, you know, the colors of the stoplight for the other ones. So they are self-adhesive. You could, you could stick, it has an on-off button. So that's good. But I mean, well, let's just do this, I guess. So this is it, huh? This is what it is. All right, so we can cycle through color modes. I mean, take a look at this one. It doesn't even switch to the yellow. It doesn't even do it. This is kind of a waste. Um, in a mass casualty incident, there's gonna be, hey, Ethan, look at this. You wanna play with that? Yeah. Yeah, there's the button. There's gonna be actual triage folks like okay so let's say i'm a first responder on the scene they're not just going to take my word for it they're going to want their their people to reevaluate you want all those yeah. those just became toys for ethan and at a price of 12.99 uh this is gimmicky this is not useful I guess if you have a marker, you can write on it what the actual injury is, but that's something else that they're going to want to know in triage. They're going to want to know why is this person in the category they're in. An actual mass casualty triage tag is, is, is somewhere in the neighborhood of the size of this. And, you know, it has information on it. It's not just a color. I don't know. Those are in the don't like it pile because they're just gimmicky. They're... I would not roll. I don't. I don't know. 
they might have some uses for other purposes. They might, you know, be able to be reused for different things, but I'm not using them to, to mark casual. Besides, if you think about it, think about a real mass casualty event. Think about all of the colored flashing lights that are all over the place. And I'm gonna have these four LEDs sitting on someone. Uh, it's just, it's not a, it's not, it's not a practical of item in, in any way. It's, it's really not. All right, moving into the advanced box with a cost of $49.99 and an $83.51 value. Halo chest seals. Chest wounds need uh, a special kind of love and care or that chest cavity that needs to be uh, an empty vacuum for lungs to work can fill with air and keep the lungs from filling up. Now I'm used to using something called an Asherman chest seal, which is a pretty cool device. I have not used Halo seals, but I've heard of Halo seals. These should be almost idiot proof, but nothing is idiot proof to a sufficiently talented idiot is what I've learned. I want to open these to look at them. Are they resealable? They are resealable, okay. So I don't want to mess with them. I want them to be good to use. And this actually looks a little bit different than an Asherman. So an Asherman has a valve um, in the middle so that you can place this on the chest, the Asherman on the chest, and then air that's inside the chest cavity can escape and no more air can come in. This looks like it is just a firm occlusive dressing which seals the chest cavity um, but does not allow anything else to come in. You know, you could use this for anything that you need an occlusive dressing for, any body cavity wound that you need to seal up. You wouldn't use this on like a bleeding arm or leg. Once again, medical stuff is expensive. So $16.95, um, you know, I, I haven't shopped for one of these, so I, I'll have to do some comparison shopping and, and put some text in if I find it for a lot cheaper. But that seems fair. I don't like that this does not give you the ability to seal and evacuate the air in a chest wound that's already in there. So I'm gonna put it in the map pile just because if they're gonna advertise a chest seal, I think there are better ones out there, personally. Um, but it's still good to have. It is good to have, I just, it's not my favorite one. Now we have a rescue litter, which seems pretty exciting. If you need to carry a casualty out of somewhere, this side up. And all it is, it is a big piece of mylar, it feels like, or reinforced mylar with some handles on it. Um, that is literally all it is. So, pros, it is lightweight. It is flexible, it is foldable, it'll store wherever you need it to. Cons, it has no rigidity to it, so uh, you would not, I mean, look, if somebody's life is in danger and you need to move them, you need to move them, but typically this is not the kind of thing we would want to use on a patient that might have a spine or, or head or neck injury. Um, again, I'm getting too much into the medical stuff. You know, this is, again, active shooter, we just want to get them out of the fire zone, but you know how people are these days. You'll save their life, and then they'll sue you because you saved their life, right? And they'll win. They will win, which is what sucks. Now, if you're in a situation, now this is the active shooter bag, right? But, like, what if you're off hiking, you know, in the mountains or something, you know, and you're in a group? First of all, you're, there are ways to use this alone. It's got a big drag handle on the end. So if you're all by yourself, it gives you the ability to drag that casualty out on your own, uh, which is cool because some litters don't, don't have that. Some you have to have multiple people, and this one lets you drag them out of there. Um, I like this because, you know, if you are off hiking and somebody falls, breaks a leg, and you splint that leg, or, you know, you do whatever, Petey Kitty Cat's going to inspect it for me right now. Uh, this is easy to fold up, easy to put in a pack, um, and then, you know, the way my mind goes is you can secure this around whoever you need to you know, with whatever splints they have on with these handles, and you can use it again to drag them out of a forest or carry them or, you know, if you're all by yourself, this can, this is, I mean, I like that it can be used when you're all by yourself, as opposed to needing a whole litter team to carry it. Uh, I don't know how rugged it is for multiple uses, but, you know, God willing, you never have to use it. If you do, hopefully you never have to use it more than once. $22, I think, is a legit price for something like this. It is a really heavy gauge material. 
smells kind of funky for whatever it's coated with. It's obviously waterproof, um, and I don't think it's waterproofing they were going for. I think it's blood barrier is what they were going for. Which also means, in my mind, you can clean it off by hosing it down. A uh, little bleach, little water, decontaminate it. Oh my gosh, am I actually going to be able to fold it up exactly like it came? Holy cow. Uh, this, I like. Uh, this is, while not the safest way to transport somebody that's just been through a traumatic injury, it's got good potential for a lot of other uses besides just your mass casualty incident, you know? Um, so, things you want to watch out for, though, I mean, it's not rigid. It could rip. You want to be careful. You don't want to catch it on anything. You don't want to rip it. You don't want to do stuff like that, so... Um, pros and cons, but overall, I think it's a, I think it's a good tool. I like it, and I think it's got more than one use to it. Peter Kitty Cat is just waiting for me to empty this box so bad. Moving into the Pro, at a cost of $99.99, with a manufacturer's suggested retail of $148.50, we've got a Combat Medic Bag, a TCC kit, blood type patch set, med tape, and triage bands. So more triage stuff, and this runs us $64.95, so let's take a look at what this combat medic bag is. This again is by Battletech. They must have gotten a good deal of Battletech. Um, so they're calling this combat medic bag. First off, I have seen this particular bag sold as many things. This is the first time I've seen it sold as a combat medic bag. I want you guys to know this is not the bag that combat medics carry. This is not an actual issued combat medic bag. So they can call it that if they want. I have this particular bag, well not this by Battletech, but this exact pattern in two different colors by two different companies. So on the back, let's see, so we've got a shoulder strap. I'm gonna remove the shoulder strap right now though, just so it's not in our way as we're looking at stuff. Um, I do like the clips. They're very easy to work with and you've got a nice big padded area. So that's cool. You've got Molly attachments on the back and you've got some little kidney pads there. So you could wear this as a belt, like as its own little pack if you wanted to. You could attach this to the rest of your gear, Molly style. These do fold in, so you could unvelcro this and fold everything inside there. You've got Molly attachments and some Velcro on the front, so you could add more gear to it. You've got some straps on the bottom. You could put whatever you want to down there. And uh, there's not a lot of adjusting to do with those straps though. A little bit in terms of these clips on top which also secure everything down. And by the way, there's your carry handle. More Velcro on the top with elastic cinch downs. These zipper pulls are a little unique though. The other ones I don't have, don't have these zipper pulls. And I like these zipper pulls. A little long though. They do get tangled up. So inside your first external pouch, little clip for whatever, some mesh pouches, um, I don't know what this string is doing here. Uh, and then one internal pouch right there. A um, little bit of padding between the next pouch and this one. Uh, and then you've got some waterproofing from the outside. Not any kind of padding, but you know, it's, it's coated there. So you can put some small items in here. That's not fun. All actual combat medic bags that the military issues, by the way, are made to be folded so they open, completely open on the ground. You've got your two side uh, pouches, um, and they're grommeted. They're you know, pretty decent size. You can hold some stuff in there. Now we come to our big top pouch. Top patch has another zippered, oh, great, another broken zipper that you gotta wear. Uh, has a zippered mesh pouch, and then some elastic straps, and this has a little bit of, not padding, but it's the nylon top of the bag. Now, you can't see it right here, but the, the waterproofing goes up through the top of there. There's also a little sliding area uh, on the top of the pouch, so you can put stuff in there if you wanted. Now inside the main pouch, 
We'll look at the stuff that comes in it separately. You've got another grommeted area for drainage. You've got a Velcro pouch over here for mostly flat stuff. Another zippered mesh pouch with some elastic. And you've got inside another mesh pouch and then all of the internal for carrying all your equipment. Not a bad little pack. I mean, you know, for just a simple little, you know, I'm going out for a hike pack or an extra little storage area for your gear, or even, you know, a, a heavy duty first aid pack, fine, but it's not a combat medic pack. Let's not get crazy here. Like the rest of the battle tack stuff though, heavy duty nylon, I mean, good material, good stitching. You know, it looks well put together. It looks well made. This would match my plate carrier pretty well. I can just put it on the back and carry stuff, which would be cool. Let's take a look at what we have inside. So here are more mass casualty identifiers. And these are even different. Um, these look like little bracelets you'd put on somebody, you know, like if they're going in a club or something. Um, minor. Now, here's the thing, and I'm just going to ask this. And, you know, legitimate question. How many people watching the channel are medically qualified to triage a mass casualty incident? That's all I'm saying. Um, how many people that get battle box are medically qualified to triage? So these are the priorities of how you're going to transport people in, you know, for treatment in, in a mass casualty. Immediate, delayed, my, and again, terminology changes minor and then deceased. Or expect it. You are not going to make it out of this. Even if we transport you right now, you're going to die. I think these are a lot more um, useful than those little lights, personally. This is very similar to what we actually use. I think, oh god, I can't remember. Is it a, a DOD 1280 casualty care card? Um, hmm, I can't remember. i got to look it up. But this is where you would... Oh, DD Form 1380. I was close. I was really close. This is where you mark what is wrong. If you do vitals, you draw everything that's that's done so that they know in the ER. These also come in, in different designs. Uh, I used to have a little book. It was a, a blue covered book and then it had these cards you ripped out. It was like a coated kind of paper and they had little wires coming off that you would twist the wires onto the casualties uniform you know and stuff this stuff is really important so you've got a little marker which i hope is a sharpie it is i smell that it's a sharpie and not a dry erase and some tape there's blood type patches and i guess we've got one for every blood type these are for your personal use these are not for the casualty, obviously. This is to go somewhere on your gear. Um, so if anything happens to you, people know what blood you need to get. Here's mine. This is all good stuff. This is not bad stuff. The problem is, again, how many people that get battle box are qualified to start triaging people? That's all I wonder. It, it's a one, it's a, a question. I wonder. I'm not. It's not an insult, it's not putting it down, it's how many, oh look, they do have expectant under there. Expectant. These are the people that you tell them you're gonna be just, hey Joe, you're gonna be perfectly fine, we're gonna get you out of here. Let me give you something to make you feel a little bit better. And then you give them like 20 milligrams of straight morphine IV and they're done. Um, anyway, like how many people are actually qualified to do all this is you know, for the people that are not, Maybe having all this cool stuff inspires them to go get certified in some stuff. That would be pretty cool. That would be awesome, actually. Unless the, you know, robot AIs take over the world, there will never be a day that we don't need EMS in this in this world. So, job security, right? That's pretty cool. I will tell you, like, without a doubt, no bullshitting you guys, the best job I've ever had was being a medic. Working on an ambulance, you hear some of the funniest stories from people. You live through some of the funniest stories in your life. You see some of the nastiest yet coolest stuff. And and I hate working in an office. You never have an office. Your office moves around all the time. And, and, the ambulance is an amazing place to hide tacos all over the place. So you always have a snack no matter where you are. You just really want to make sure that at the end of your shift you find every single taco you've hidden so that they don't sit and smell over time. I recommend drawing a map to all of the tacos so that you can find the tacos later. 
It sucks when a week later you're still hunting for that stinky, smelly old taco. That's a whole other story. So, only got one thing left. We've got our Pro Plus Knife of the Month, Fox Knives. I've always wanted something like Fox Knives, and I just, I, I held off. I hesitated buying one I really wanted, and then it was like discontinued. So I'm excited now. Um, so Fox Knives XF213. This is not the one I really wanted. I have a feeling this is one Battle Box has given out Bye, before Daddy. too. Bye, Ethan. I think this is one Battle Box has given out before, but it's uh, retail of 150.25. Fox Knives Italy original product, so we know it's original. This is not at all what I thought it was. No. Let's take a look at this. Um, so here's their warranty card. Cool. Well, this is pretty fancy right here. Um, what a unique way to carry a knife. Looks like you push that down and that opens. And this is how you would put it on, say, a belt or a pack or something. Very, very interesting. Um, I just really want to see what this thing does. How very unique. I have never seen this knife before in my life. And I'm super curious. I've heard such good things about Fox knives. So here, number one, you can clip this to something. Uh, I think these handles are plastic. Definitely not G10. Whenever I see an orange handled knife, even though it's brand new, my brain starts seeing it dirty because I know that that orange is going to pick up all sorts of dirt and stuff as it, as it ages. Some really nice rubber inlay there though. Ugh, the grip on that is amazing. And whether that gets wet or bloody or whatever, that's going to stay in your hand. The rubber inlays, turns out, glow in the dark. Not too bright a glow, just enough that you can see it nicely, among other things. Um, little glass breaker right there. And don't forget, glass breaker also equals temple smasher, self-defense mode. Looks like you've got a screwdriver slash pry tool. And then a Phillips head on the other side. Awesome. Um, don't have any options for the clip, so it is tip down only. Right hand tip down only. You are screwed if you like anything else. Ready for the opening? I hope this opens beautifully. Oh, it opens beautifully. Kind of a smaller blade than I was expecting, though. Look at that. So, can you read that? It's N690 steel, which has a great corrosion resistance. Um, oh, yay, a bottle opener. So this is a very thick, tough looking little blade. Um, I don't think it's intentional, but where that Phillips head is, get your thumb right in there. Um, the tip there looks really well built and supported for puncturing stuff. Even though it's kind of small, it is fairly comfortable, even, even in my hands, and I, I'm not a fan of small knives. Um, you've got a liner lock. It's a very thin liner lock. It's hard to see the lock up there, but I mean, it feels solid. Very smooth action. Little, honestly, a little uncomfortable. Um, it tends to catch my thumb right there with that screwdriver. Move my thumb back a little. Uh, don't think we're dealing with bearings at all. I think it's washers, but it's very smooth. Beautiful blade. I'm just being careful to avoid the serrations because that's going to mess things up. But you can see nice, tiny, little curly cues. Almost no effort whatsoever to cut through the 550 cord. That's awesome. Yeah, great edge. Um, I wish it didn't have the serrations there, but besides that, it's a nice little knife. It is a little bit uncomfortable unlocking it, I'm not gonna lie, but other than that, good centering, um, weight feels good. Got this crazy ass sheath thing to put it in, um, which holds it really tight. I mean, it really secure. As usual, the knife of the month does not disappoint. So we're gonna put the knife of the month in the like it pile. It's kind of the end tally of the video. We have our two items in the don't like it pile. We've got our one that's kind of like meh. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and Ethan has the shears. So that's six items in the like it pile. 
I'm pretty happy with this box. I think it's got a lot of useful items. The only problem I foresee is that for a lot of this, you gotta you gotta know what you're doing to to really use them properly. Now you know what stuff like this. Hey, you can use rubber gloves to do anything. You can use them to keep your hands clean, working on a car or whatever. So, I mean, this has a lot of use. Um, you could also, if you're crafty, you could just sew another panel on top of this, and this is a great pouch for whatever you want. Um, but it's a well-made pouch. This is not a combat medic bag by any means, but it's a it's a good, well-made bag. You could use it for a lot of things. We talked about the litter and the different uses it has. Um, this knife is a really interesting knife, and I don't mean like my interesting as a code word for shitty. I mean like it's an interesting knife. I have several of these in different places. This is great to have all over the place. Oh, sorry, did I take your scissors away? No. You know, I think the good items in the Like It Pile have a lot of potential for use, not only in this in this scenario, but overall for all sorts of different things that we're looking at. The stuff that's here in the Don't Like It Pile, just not well made, gimmicky. Better items out there that, that do the same job more effectively. Uh, I think it's I think it's a waste. And then the meh, we kind of talked about the meh is the map with it and it, it's got some pretty good items in it uh, even though some of them can be improved or just maybe set on fire and shot into the sun in a giant cannon you know but that's it guys so remember gloves if it's wet and it's not yours don't touch it best words of advice from a seasoned senior medic when I was in school. Oh, and uh, get ready for uh, February's Q&A video next week as well. Any last minute opportunities to send your questions, questions for docp at gmail.com. Okay, uh, you guys are awesome. For real, you're awesome. I love talking back and forth with a lot of you. Um, I like some of you better than others. I'll say it. Um, no, you're all awesome. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll be back again real soon.